uh, in the name of God, most gracious, most merciful. In this um, talk, we're going to actually listen to a conversation by, of course, the anchor, and then the person who was in ch who who's the founder of WikiLeaks. And I'm sure a lot of you know about WikiLeaks. But what is important is the message he's trying to give. And what's interesting is, you know, this lady is trying to stop him from giving his message. Now, why this message is important is, according to the hadith of Tamim al darmi uh, one of the tools of the Jal, or one of the tools of the Antichrist, will be the ability to do surveillance and get information very easily. So what we see here is, he's talking about WikiLeaks and how he was able to get or what he's trying to talk about is how, how 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 sophisticated surveillance has become and the companies that are doing it and he talks about the 75 com companies there are 175 companies I think he mentions that are trying to do this and she's more interested in oh you know why have you taken asylum here which is of course not that much of an interesting story even from a story perspective than the story of you know what uh, states and countries are doing to have surveillance over their own people. So we'll just watch this and I'll make comments as this goes by. TV 15. Anderson Cooper is keeping them honest. AC 360. CNN tomorrow night. 80. Our fifth story out front the man behind WikiLeaks. Julian Assange is one of the world's most controversial people. A 41-year-old Australian has posted hundreds of thousands of U.S. military documents, videos, and diplomatic cables on his website. The U.S. government is scrambling to find out where he got them. So, of course, they're interested in finding out where he got them. Now, he wants to talk about how you can get them. But she's not actually interested in that. And you'll see that when he keeps changing the conversation to what he wants, to what the media would not want him to talk about on national t TV. Uh, she keeps, and even at one point, she'll be like, this is not what I agreed to talk about. So you'll see this. Now, the government right now believes his source is Army Private Bradley Manning, who stands accused of stealing classified documents and giving them to WikiLeaks. The former intelligence analyst in Iraq is facing 22 charges, including aiding the enemy. He could spend the rest of his life in jail. <laughs> Assange will not reveal his sources and has not been charged by the United States. For the past five months, he's been living in the Ecuadorian embassy in London. Ecuador has granted him asylum as he tries to avoid extradition to Sweden, where he faces allegations of sexual assault, allegations that he denies. Now, Julian Assange is out front tonight from the embassy. He's just written a new book called... So she's more interested in talking about why he took asylum with Ecuador rather than talking about how people are, as you'll see, how people are able to get personal information of, at all levels of every single person. She's not interested in talking about state-sponsored surveillance. Cyberpunks, freedom, and the future of the internet. And it's great to see you, Mr. Assange. I appreciate it. I wanted to start by asking you something at the very... Why? Because, as he'll describe, internet, in a way, because if everyone, if there are companies that can intercept everything from the internet, your email, your Facebook, all your private stuff, if everything can be intercepted from the internet, then that's a threat to freedom. And so you'll see him talk about this. At the beginning of your book, that really shocked me. You said, um, the internet is a threat to human civilization. And I thought, saw that and I thought, but the internet is the tool by which you, Julian Assange, have become one of the world's most controversial people, where you've published all this information. Why is the internet bad? Well, Here's the book here as well. It's on the back as well, that quote. But the internet has become integral to our human civilization. It is the device by which we all communicate, by which we formulate laws, by which we engage in trade deals, by which we communicate the very core of our inner personal lives to one another. So the internet and civilization has merged. And that's a new phenomenon. It's not just that uh, this is a phenomenon affecting one country, but rather global civilization is merging, has merged arguably, with the internet. So anything that is affects the internet in a serious way uh, affects civilization in a serious way. The big problem we have now is the control and mass buying that is occurring on the internet. And that is He's talking about personal information and, uh, you know, surveillance uh, mechanisms changed in the past 10 years, mainly because the technology to do it has become cheaper. So, 
So let me just ask you a little bit about, I mean, you talk about the cables that, that obviously are at the center of this entire case in the U.S., uh, in, in the book, uh, and, and Bradley Manning obviously... He's, uh, she's referring to the cables that have to do with the Internet. He's the one who, who had them, according to the United States. He's in a pretrial hearing. He's trying to get the charges for him uh, against him. They're for aiding the enemy, uh, thrown out of court. But obviously, as, as I said, he could end up spending the rest of his life in, in jail. Do you feel any guilt about that since the information the U.S. government says that he stole was published by you? No matter where you got it, you published it. Bradley Manning is in, uh, in court today, today in the United States and throughout this week. The case is not about whether Bradley Manning uh, allegedly stole uh, cables or not. The case is about the abuse of Bradley Manning. Uh, over a nine-month period, Bradley Manning was abused. In fact, the United Nations has investigated this. The Special Rapporteur for Torture, Juan Mendez, found formally against the United States, saying his treatment was akin to torture. Why was he treated that way? Well, his lawyer argues, and many others who have followed the case argues, was ordered to coerce him uh, into a confession that would bring down me or bring down WikiLeaks. Uh, now, as far as we know, there has been no such uh, confession, uh, but that's the case that's ongoing now. And that case is a reflection of a decay in the rule of law. Uh, the secretary, the Hillary Clinton spokesperson, resigned over the issue. The entire Quantico uh, prisoner base in Virginia was closed uh, over this issue. It's a serious issue, and it reflects serious problems within the military system. That it's, it has a, a feeling of unaccountability, and that unaccount unaccountability mm -hmm. is flowing into other parts of our life. Now, I, 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 didn't, I don't want to get into detail. I know you have a, a strong point of view, obviously, on how Bradley Manning has been, has been treated, but I didn't want to go down that path. Part of it is how the military is using these surveillance companies to have surveillance on whoever they want. You a question though about something else you said about him when you said that you thought that part of the reason they were doing what they were doing was to coerce him uh, perhaps into uh, getting getting you involved in all of this he, he could make a deal to serve limited time and to make that deal you could be the guy who loses out I mean are you worried that that could be the deal he says this is what Julian Assange did to help me get the information to leak it well I don't want to comment on the legal specifics that would obviously be unwise uh, in, in view of what is happening, there is a concurrent process which is occurring for the last two years, an ongoing grand jury, which has sucked in a vast number of people, attempted to compel them to testify, pulled in all sorts of records, uh, pulled in um, Twitter rec records uh, in relation to information about me, pulled in information uh, from Gmail, pulled in information from American service providers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So part of the reason that this book uh, has been written uh, is because we are, have become very well aware of what all these mechanisms are as a result of being embroiled in that process. Uh, one of the co-authors, Jacob Applebaum, uh, just filled in for me once at a talk uh, in New York. Uh, and as a result, he has been subject uh, to this process as well. He has been detained uh, at airports and so on. Uh, you, can, you can read about those details in the book. But let's go back to... To, you know, this is just a small symptom, and in a way, uh, what's happening to Julian Assange is not particularly important, except that it is part of a much wider process. Now, it's not just the process that I'm talking about. It's a process which all the top national security journalists in the United States are talking about. Jane Mayer's uh, article on Bill Binney in The New Yorker says the same thing. Uh, Dana Priest from The Washington Post and her book, Top Secret America, where she likens what is going on uh, to literally a uh, metastasizing cancer, uh, where we now have five million people uh, in, this, uh, in the national security clearance system in the United States, uh, state within a state. Now, it's not just the United States. This is a worldwide phenomenon. Uh, and you can look at the spy files, which were published by WikiLeaks, just Google WikiLeaks spy files. Yep, it's on your website. And you will see mm -hmm. details of over 175 uh, companies around the world that sell this mass surveillance uh, technology. We're not talking anymore about picking on particular activists, going, oh, look, you just spoke to Julian Assange. That's interesting. Now maybe we'll spy on you. Rather, the new game in town is strategic surveillance. It is cheaper now.
to intercept all communications in and out of a country, mm -hmm. store it permanently, than it is to simply go after one particular person. And over here, I want to mention the next step of that is now that you have information on everyone, it's simply inf easier to get information on everyone and have it stored. Now, the next step, of course, that after that is like a type of data mining where you learn the best ways to get the most relevant information the fastest because there's an information overload when you just take everything. But that's what the Dajjal will be an, an expert at, at. And inshallah, that should be something I will be discussing in some of my lectures later on. And there's companies in South Africa that were selling that into Libya. The French make a system, Amasis, that we expose that was a nationwide interception system, advertised as a nationwide interception system. This is not Look, a, a matter of speculation. The, these are documents from these companies. They're secret prospectuses that are sold. Here, strategic mass infection system, FinFisher. Just Google FinFisher, you'll see it. Plenty of good work has been done on this. But a whole bunch of journalists. Right, now, what I, I'm curious, though, about this, because, again, this, this you know, you were... See, she doesn't want to talk about this, so see what she does. And he's going to bring it back, and then she's going to just be frustrated, and then she's going to end it just abruptly, as you'll see. It's a point. A lot of people share this fear about, about being under surveillance, right? I mean, I, I don't, you know, some people might say you go way too far on it, but people do share your fear. But you also are someone out there trying to champion, and like I said, benefiting by the Internet by putting out information that governments don't want people to have. And, and I wanted to ask you uh, in particular about where you, you are tonight. Um, first, just one question I, I wanted to ask you because people ask me about this today, and I have you here and I want to ask you. Officials from Ecuador say that you have a lung infection and you've been sick uh, since you've had to stay there. Is that true? Well, I, I'm not, Julia Assange is not very important. You know, I, I am in an extraordinary situation, and have been in an extraordinary situation for over uh, two years now. But what is important is this development that is affecting all of us. Um, oh, I, I know, you know, but I mean, but I, I, can you... Die, I, democracies die okay, behind closed doors. Can you That's answer the reality. question about whether you're and sick or do you not want to talk are, about it? I don't think it's important. Okay, uh, but then, then let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. It's a serious situation now. I, I understand. Let me ask you this, though, about Ecuador, because, you know, look, you've, as you say, you've been there in this extraordinary situation for five months. They've provided you asylum. They've been trying to get you out of the country that you're in right now to avoid facing charges in Sweden or the U.S. But, but you know, when you talk about this, you know, government's clamping down on people's right to speak, Ecuador is an unlikely champion of your call for free speech. And, and I wanted to, to lay this out for you because. Just this month, Human Rights uh, Ecuador reports that the president of Ecuador, President Correa, proposed oh, look, 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 that look, well, let, me, let me finish here for our viewers. Serious, serious. Let, me, let me finish for my viewers here, though, and then and then you can go ahead and, and rip it apart. They said he said freedom of expression. That's another very important statement she just revealed here. She said, "Go ahead, rip it apart." After I make the statement, when these journalists interview people, it's all about. It's not about dialogue and understanding and, okay, let me see what you have to say. It's about the person who's interviewing, how much he or she can promote what the, the ideas the network wants to promote or what the producer wants them to bring out. And so they try to control. And it's interesting that she's talking about Ecuador giving him asylum and Ecuador is not for freedom of speech. But yet, here she will try to control his freedom of speech on her program should be a function of the state well, look, where I, information I, would not, be I'm regulated. Not to, I'm, not to, I'm not here to but, talk but about this. But, but I'm going to ask you the question. It's very relevant question. I'm not here to talk about I've heard look, it. This government is a government that has been, the Committee to Protect little, Journalists says... These little things about Ecuador or, or it's not, whatever. It's Come not on, a little let's, thing. Let's be, let's be real. Suppressing let's be journalists is not a little I mean, thing for someone who says that their job is to put out information that governments try to suppress. It's a very big problem, the suppression of the freedom of speech all over the world, an extremely big problem, and so is the collapse in the rule of law. And you should be well aware that Al Jazeera journalists spent six years in Guantanamo Bay, that there are cases all across the U.S. that this, that the Pentagon is now taking a position where it is saying, arbitrarily, completely invented, that the act of receiving information by any journalist anywhere in the world that the Pentagon says is classified and publishing some portion of it, or quotes from it, is espionage. Okay, and they're saying that that is something that applies to journalists okay. and 
that it also applies to people within government. I understand your point, but the Committee to Protect Journalists says enemy. about so Ecuador, ex about Ecuador, hold on. Let, let me ask the question. About Ecuador, in less than five See, years... See, again, who cares about Ecuador? Let's talk about the ability of companies and countries to have surveillance over their people. No, she doesn't want to talk about that. That would be a much better story. President Correa has turned as, Ecuador as we, into one of the agreed, hemisphere's most restrictive program, nations for the, the press. The is the How do you justify state? staying there are, as a guest? We are in a situation where the entire... I didn't agree to talk about the surveillance are, state. I didn't agree to talk about the surveillance state. In a situ well, I'm, I'm sorry. Look, do you want to bring my PAs on? Please, please. Serious situation here. Whatever, whatever little things occurring in small countries are not of a concern. Okay, but this country that is Ecuador is the country that is, is pre preventing you from being arrested the, the minute you walk world, outside the door. Including, including the United States, including Western Europe, including France, including what was happening in former Libya. We are experts in this. We have lived through it. We have researched it. We have documented it. Then why will it. you not talk about Ecuador? Of national security journalists. He's not, he didn't say he's an expert on Ecuador. He said he's an expert as far as getting surveillance information is concerned. But anyway, she's stupid. We're involved in this sort of thing. Because Ecuador is Jahid. significant. But it's it is the country that is enabling to you to not be arrested. It, it, it's it's been, significant. People have, it's people have been generous uh, to me, yes. etc. But it's not, it's not a significant world player. South America and the developments that are happening in South, South America are interesting and significant, and it's growing and verging independence. But they are not the topic of, of what we're doing here. The topic of this book is what is happening to all of us and the threats that all of us face. You know, in the 1930s, certain people saw what was going on, and they saw the general trends. I'm telling you, there is a general trend. I am an expert and I've lived through it. Other experts have also lived through different facets of this. An American, a German, and a, and a Frenchman, all experts on different parts of what is happening legislatively and what is happening in terms of the technology. Now we are all being intercepted right. permanently. This is, this is a state change. This is not a matter of simply a small change to any individual. It is a sea change. Okay. in politics, and we're going to have to do something about it. If we don't do something about it, we all run the risk of losing the democracy that we've treasured for so long. We will leave it on that note, and thank you very much. And we will leave it on that note. Again, the hadith by Tamim Ad-Darmi is the hadith about how Dijjal, if you take the hadith, read it at the end, where it talks about where he, meaning the Sahabi, went. He wasn't a Sahabi yet, but he was at the island where he saw this animal that had no beginning, no end. It was all hairy. And he said, what is your name? What are you? He said, I'm Jassasa. And Jassasa is from Jasus, which means to spy. And then he says, you know, he, and he says, if you want, you know, more information, you go to the monastery. And so he goes to the mon monastery and has a conversation with the Dajjal. That hadith you can find, I'm sure, on the internet if you Google it. But the point is, the the weapon, one of the weapons and one of the tools of Dajjal is going to be a master spy. And he's going to use this. And in fact, the one of the symbolisms of Dajjal is the one eye. So that is the private eye, you know, the eye, the spying, the, the, the ability to see and observe. Uh, the all-aware eye, so to say, as you even find on the dollar. Um, so that gives people, or that would give the Dajjal the power he needs to control societies and people. And it's now gone to the point where, much like that animal that has no beginning, no end, and it's all hairy, just like the internet that seems to have no beginning, no end, and it's all wires, it's all hairy, um, just like that, uh, that is the internet, because now it's become part of civilization, and if uh, surveillance can be done through the internet, then that uh, creates a severe threat for uh, for the masses. And they're looking at it from the perspective of the threat to democracy, but uh, I'm looking at it from the perspective of how tools like this that are as good as this, or even perhaps even better than this, that will be in the hands of Dajjal. And uh, one more example, when Dajjal brings 
um, the dead mother or the dead father alive and the person will the 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 entity will or perhaps a jinn will say yes i'm your father and he'll recognize his voice and everything how will this happen it'll happen through their ability of surveillance and and information gathering and then using science and magic together to fool the people and deceive the people so i'll just end in that assalamu alaikum take care bye